You're out there right now considering purchasing an Airbnb or a short-term rental. Why? Because the internet is just buzzing with how much money you can make. But have you heard any of the horror stories? I am here to expose some of my top few horror stories just to make sure that you know exactly what it is that you are about to get into. Stick around. So let's just jump right into it. You are super excited about getting your first short-term rental or Airbnb, as I was. But now that I've owned three Airbnbs for about four and a half years, I got some stories for you. So here's a couple things that have happened to me, some negatives that you may wanna know so that you are better prepared for when they happen to you. First of all, you're dealing with people and people can be funny, they can be weird, they can be rude. So just go into this knowing that you are going to be a host. You are constantly going to be accommodating other people and trying to make them happy. Not all people wanna be happy. Some people just wanna leave you mean reviews and that is seriously the truth. Frustrates me all the time, but it's the truth. So here are a couple things that have happened to me. Have you ever traveled on vacation and brought along a refrigerator thermometer to check the temperature of the fridge? True story. I had some clients that brought a thermometer and were checking the temperature of my refrigerator saying that I wasn't to refrigerator standards. And then they proceeded to tell me that I needed to pay for all of their food that they thought would be spoiled if they were to place their food in my refrigerator. There's not a lot that I can say to that. I don't know if that's true. I don't know my refrigerator temperature standards. That was a new one for me. I did become an expert in a matter of a couple days, but in any case, I did end up paying for their food because I felt like if that was true and they were honest to goodness people concerned about their food going bad, that that was the responsible thing for me to do as a super host. That's kind of when I started to realize that Airbnb specifically, I'm not talking about other platforms like VRBO, et cetera, but Airbnb specifically doesn't have a lot of things put in place to protect the host. I feel like that a lot of the times it's the guests that have the upper hand and I'm more on the reactive side being the host without a lot of things in place to protect me. At the end of the day, everybody's gonna be able to write a review, but I have to leave a review before ever seeing what the guest leaves as a review. So even sometimes when I've got great commentary between guests, I can get an ugly review. Of course, I'm always trying to strive for that five-star review. So again, in this case, I ended up paying for their food and tried to make everything as pleasant as humanly possible so that they felt comfortable with eating food that was well taken care of or preserved, what have you. I had a refrigerator technician come out to the property, multiple actually, in which they told me that there was nothing wrong with my refrigerator. So in that case, I was out some good money. For them, they ended up getting their stay half off. Now, I don't think that that was very fair, but because I'm a super host and I'm constantly striving for that super host status, I did what I felt was fair, even though they were kind of meanies. Now let's talk about destruction of property. Oh, this one hurts so bad. It takes me so long to get these adorable little short-term rentals set up and looking cute and all ready for photographs. And I just always envision that they're gonna be perfect every time somebody walks in the door. But they're not because sometimes people are just rude and they don't watch their children or whatever. They're a little rougher with their house because it's not their own. Many, many a times I have things broken or destroyed in my properties and that's just something that you're going to have to deal with. Gosh, to rattle off a few, we used to have a dartboard in one of our cabins. We no longer have a dartboard because every time we came into this cabin, we would find darts in the ceilings. That's not where the dartboard was hanging. That was one of many of things. I've had bleach spilt on brand new carpet of mine. I've had recliner chairs, the handles broken off. I've had, oh, sinks jimmy rigged where people threw like a, uh, like a plunger underneath to keep the sink up. I have had so many weird things happen because, well, one, they don't wanna tell me because there is some money on the line if they were to destroy or mess up the property. So I can go through the Airbnb channels and go, hey, I want some of their security deposit because they broke X, Y, Z, which is why a lot of times people try hiding that thing. So unless my cleaners catch it, I may not know about it and I just let them go on their merry way and it's not until 
few days or weeks later that I actually figure out something was broken. So be in for the ride of your life when you think that, oh, this place is just cute as a button and it's always gonna stay that way. No, it will not. It will get destroyed. You will have to fix things and just bring your patience, baby, that comes with the game. Now let's talk about those dynamic issues. Those think on your toes, Felicia, and figure this out issues. For example, I recently, this past winter, had a client who contacted me and said, you know, Felicia, the cabin is beautiful. We're loving your, our stay here. There's about two foot of snow outside. The heater is working, but it won't turn off. It won't turn off and it feels like it's about 85 degrees in the cabin. The good news I thought was, well, at least it's the heater working in the dead of winter and not working. But of course I want my clients to be comfortable in their surroundings and 85 degrees is probably not comfortable. So those are those moments where you are going to stop what you're doing and become a landlord and try to figure out these dynamic issues. Call an HVAC company, try to get them out. Obviously I'm trying to keep the client happy. So I was talking about maybe some refund status there. I figured out when they were gonna be hiking and that's when I was gonna have the HVAC specialist come in to try and fix the heater. Unfortunately, in this situation, the part that they needed was not available until after my guests left. So I just came up with some kind of idea of keeping some windows open, keeping airflow on. We had fans delivered to them in the dead of winter to just get some airflow going through the cabin. Good news was they were doing a lot of hiking and staying out of the uh, cabin for the most part. But man, that is a stressful time when you've got to call people and it's the dead of winter and there's two feet of snow outside and you're not easily accessible and you have a problem at your home. Mind you, this specific property that I'm talking about is out of state too. So now I'm dealing with time differences and things like that. So you are going to have dynamic issues occurring, whether that's a plumbing issue or a plumbing leak or what have you, and you are going to have to figure these out if you obviously are managing them yourselves, which I think you are all capable of. Just be prepared for your moment of sitting on the beach with your family, thinking that you're enjoying your vacation when bing, you are now called to be a landlord and you are now called to figure out things. That's going to happen, so buckle up. Now let me prepare you for the ridiculousness of people. It's not necessarily them being rude or mean or vindictive, just downright silly. Do you know how many times I've received a late night text message? And I'm talking like 10.30, midnight, 2 a.m., 2 a.m., no joke, like 2 a.m. I have received the stupidest text messages in which I am trying so hard not to lose my cool because I am in the customer service industry. So I'm just trying to keep my little smiley face on as much as possible. Some examples of these text messages have been, Hey Felicia, we've really been enjoying our stay at your Airbnb. We were just wondering if you could tell us where you purchased this coffee mug from. It's 2 a.m. and they're texting me about where I purchased coffee mugs from. Or better yet, I got one before that a lady was super concerned that the air conditioning system was not working and I needed to get somebody out to that property immediately to fix the AC because it just wasn't cooling down. This was at a property that doesn't have an air conditioning system and actually it was annotated in multiple locations on the Airbnb app that it did not have an air conditioning system. So ma'am, that's not gonna be possible. There's no air conditioning at that cabin. Most cabins on the mountain don't have air conditioning and that was annotated throughout the listing. I hope that you're still gonna enjoy your stay because the only thing that we have at that property is cool mountain air and some fans for your disposal. So there are gonna be so many times where people are going to ask you the silliest things and you are going to keep a smile on because you wanna maintain that super host status and that five-star review. It can be irritating to say the least, but at the end of the day, these are the same people that are also paying your mortgage. So yes, I will still agree with the thought process out there that short-term rentals are absolutely amazing and incredible vessels to establish wealth in the real estate game. But these ones come with some extra kind of issues and a lot of them have to deal with dealing with people. You are in a customer service industry and you now have to maintain that status and maintain people's happiness, which is sometimes just really, really difficult to do, no matter how good you are. I hope that I was able to point out not all of the 
pros and the roses that come along with the short-term rental industry, but some of the things that you should really brace yourself for, the things that are unexpected, even though they can be considered funny stories, I mean, they are just downright frustrating. You're never going to make everybody happy. I think that's just the name of the game. You're never going to make everybody happy, but you can sure try. I hope that I didn't detour you away from getting a short-term rental because it has been very lucrative. It's just, it's made me a little bit tougher too. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please be sure to like and subscribe and do all the things. I promise to continue bringing you as much information as humanly possible. Until next time, see ya.